Hey, 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 it's Lori Alvarez, and I am live again today. As usual, it's Thursday, and Thursday, 1.30 to 2.30, we knock out real estate questions and answers. So, what questions do you guys have? What do you need to know about real estate that need an answer? Ask me, let me know. Love to give you the information you specifically are looking for. Not what I think, but what you need specifically. So today we've got three great questions. We've got a seller question. We've got a question, a buyer question, and then we've also got homeowner tips. So stay to the end because I'm going to get to you who currently own homes. I'm going to get to you and talk about some suggestions I have to be a better, more adequate, um, awesome homeowner, right? More organized homeowner, create real estate wealth. So anyways, our question for today, our seller question for today is, Lori, how do I determine the value of my house when selling it? That's a fantastic question. And you buyers should be asking the same question of your realtor when you write your offer. But let's start with the seller. First and foremost, how do you determine the value of a property? Well, one, you can get an appraisal, right? What's an appraisal? Well, an appraisal is an independent company or person that you hire. It is a company that you hire to go out, pull the surrounding comps, from the neighborhood, put together a beautiful technical report that then is provided to you on different types of values. Is it a refinance? Is it a resell? Is it just for cash out? What is it for? You need to know that because the truth is appraisals are different in every area of the type of appraisal you get, okay? And who you hire. Should you need an appraiser and you want to pay for an appraisal, which some people need to because why? Their mother or their parent or a family member passed away and they've now inherited a home. So guess what? They need to get an appraised value of the property, not just a real estate comparable market analysis, right? A realtor's evaluation. I just recently had that text message come through the other night. I was laying in bed, resting, and I had to happen to have my phone with me. And of course, because I don't normally take this baby with me to bed, but I happened to be resting one night and had it. And someone texted me and said, Lori, I just inherited mom and dad's house. And now I need to get an appraiser's value of the property. And I said, great, no problem. I can do a comparable market analysis for you at no charge if you would like that. Or I can connect you with one of my referral affiliate partners that I love, know and trust, uh, fantastic appraiser, appraisers to get you just the number you need. And so she got back to me and she said, you know what, we actually need a appraisal. Our attorney is requiring an appraisal. Fantastic. Connected them right up to my favorite appraiser that I believe would give them the most accurate value of the property. And they got that all taken care of. And my appraiser was super happy to help them. And there is a charge when you reach out to an appraiser, right? There is a charge for that. They're not free. And they vary from appraiser to appraiser and the technical difficulty of the appraisal. There are some people who require appraisals from a historical standpoint. Maybe your family member passed away many years ago, or maybe just maybe your um, divorce never got settled. And so you left the house 12 years ago. And so now you have to go back and get the numbers from 12 years ago to decide the value at the time that you left the property, right? Or 
your spouse or soon to be ex spouse left the property. There's a lot, a lot of reasons why you need to pay for a formal appraisal. And they're always great, right? Always makes sense to do it. There's no reason why you wouldn't want to do it. Even when you're putting your house up for sale, you may decide, I still want to pay for an appraisal. I want to get that second opinion. Hey, great. Get that second opinion. It will help you decide what makes best sense for you, right? When selling your property, right? So then there's called a comparable market analysis, right? That is a realtor's um, CMA, right? And that is done for you. Generally, there is no charge for the report. Generally, there isn't. Now, some realtors may charge. It just depends. Every realtor is different. They have different uh, rules and regulations with regards to it. We have strict guidelines within the state of California where I'm located um, and guidelines from every different location. And I know I have viewers all over the place. So remember, you always want to validate this with your local laws and ordinances for your community specifically. I'm talking about where I am locally in the state of California, right? I provide my clients comparable market analysis all the time. And I do that at no charge. And I am pretty darn spot on with my numbers. And that I do know I'm about 92% accurate. I don't believe I'm 100% accurate in anything. I am 92% accurate with regards to the value of a property, right? Uh, and how do I know that? because I track my numbers. I'm aware of what I list to what I sell for. And I either sell for more, sell for less, or sell right about where I am, right? Right about where the market is. So you can feel confident that when I sit down with you in your listing appointment, I have an accurate number, right? Of what your house is truly worth because that is such an important thing. You need to know and have complete confidence when you're working with a real estate professional like myself, right? Lori Alvarez, that you go, okay, yes, this real estate professional knows their numbers. They're aware of it, right? Because you need to really break it down. You need to know, how many houses have sold in the area? How many houses are available for sale today? How many houses have went on the market and didn't sell? And then why didn't they sell, right? That's what a professional realtor like myself will tell you. Uh-oh, this house went on the market and never sold. Why? Why has it never sold? Because you might like that number. Say, for example, you are like, oh, I think my house is worth 600000 but none of them are selling for 600000 They're selling for five fifty. But you said, oh, no, but there was one down the street. Lori, down the street, 600000 Well, it never sold. So that doesn't matter. It doesn't count. What matters is the sold properties, because that is a number that says, I am a buyer, you are a seller, and we agree upon a price, right? Because that's who truly determine the value of your property, right? So yes, I'm going to give you a fantastic comparable market analysis, and I'm going to give you my suggested number, my idea of what the house might be worth. And then I'm going to defer to you as a seller and you as a buyer to make the ultimate decision, right? I can only give you information. All the rest of the information is provided from the person that's actually willing to sell my home and willing 
to buy my home. So that those two things come together and that makes sense, right? So I challenge you when you sit down with a realtor and they say, oh, I would like to sell your house at 650,000. And you were like, wow, gosh darn, that's kind of cool. I didn't realize I was worth that much, right? Or, right, they say, oh, I'll sell your house. And you're like, well, I thought I was worth more than that. What, what is it? Am I this or am I that? You know what a great question to ask that realtor is, what would you pay for my house, Mr. Realtor? If you were going to buy it, what would you pay? Because if the realtor won't pay what you're listed at, that tells you a lot, right? It either tells you, one, you don't have a great realtor, or two, the realtor doesn't know what the true value is of the home, right? So you want to think about that and go like, okay, right? And then think about it from the perspective of what would you pay for your house today? Don't think of it as I'm like the homeowner now. Would you pay that for your house, right? Did down the street, the same exact house with the same exact square footage, roughly a couple hundred square feet here or there, right? Had some of the same updates and some of the same upgrades. Would I pay that for my house, right? Otherwise, you could just put it on the market and let it sit there and sell everyone else's house, right? Because everyone will be like, oh, look at you're so expensive. The one around the corner is way cheaper. I'll just go buy that one. It's your choice. It truly is. You decide what the value is. We just give you numbers and we help you get educated to make the right decision. You decide if your house is going to sell as the seller, right? It's up to you. You have complete power and control on whether or not you sell your house. Not the realtors. You do, right? Of course, there's unethical realtors out there that'll try to steal a house for you. So you need to be careful of that as well. I'm not one of those. And there are those realtors out there that will steal a house, right? They will, unfortunately. And generally, the government will find them and shut them down and take their real estate license away, right? Generally. So we talked about an appraisal, hiring an appraiser. We talked about a market analysis. So the last thing we need to talk about, which I hinted at, suggested at, and said, these are the people who actually determine the true value of the house, is the buyer value and the seller value. When do they align and become one? When, when do they say, you know what? Yeah, I'll pay this for that house, right? That is when you know you've hit market value, right? I had someone recently I was working with in the past, right? And they were like, Oh, well, you need to price my house at a million, 1.2579, some crazy number, right? That's what they wanted me to price, price their house out. And they said, and, and that's still giving it away. Then I said, okay, fine. We'll put it on that price because that's what you believe you're worth. Your house is worth. I knew it wasn't. They believed it. So I had to share it with them. And so come on, be reasonable people. If you see a great steal out there, you're going to go get it, right? You're not going to be like, oh, let me check it out, wait on it and see if the price is cheaper next week. No, you as the consumer know, oh my gosh, that's a steal. I need to get it now right? You as the consumer, you know, if you're a regular consumer of that product. Well, let me tell you, there are people out there that watch and buy real estate regularly. And they know when you underpriced your house, and they will buy it just like that. This guy's house sat on the market for a month would not understand that he was not a still, even at over a million bucks, he was still not a still. People know when it's a steal, right? They just know because there are regular consumers that follow the real estate market, investors 
who are like, yes, that's a rocking price for that house. I'm going to scoop it up now. That happens. So guys, let's be reasonable. Okay. If you're underpriced, your house is going to rise in value unless you have an unethical realtor who doesn't tell you that you have these offers going up. Right. It can happen. It's actually to your benefit if you price your house a little lower rather than on the high end like so many sellers want to do. Like, what are you thinking? Pricing at the high end. And then they say this crazy thing like, I have time. No, you don't. You may have time on your calendar. You do not have time on your equity because with equity, time takes away or adds to your value. That's just the reality of it. If your neighbor goes on the market for $10,000 less, guess what just happened? your value just went down. See, your neighbor is like, I don't have time. I need to get the heck out of here. Guess what? They just pulled your value down. So guys, you may have all the time in the world, but equity, as quickly as it comes with time, is as quickly as it goes away with time. Price right, get your value done correctly, get it on the market, stay ahead of the market. We're in a shifting market right now, right? I had a conversation with my team the other day and one of my team members said, Lori, the market is correcting itself right now. Yes, that is exactly what's happening right now. We are in a correcting market. What is a correcting market? It's when values were doing this and then all of a sudden it starts doing this and now it's doing that. Does that make sense? We've got to think about this stuff 100%, right? So how do you, as a seller, determine your value? Well, you call me, Lori Alvarez, and you say, Lori, I need you to come over. I need you to tell me what? is the value of my property. Oh, that's right, it's COVID-19. I don't want you to come over to my house. Well, we can do it all digitally as well. Um, obviously, as you can tell, I prefer to be one-on-one -on -one with you. Sit down and have a great conversation with my social distance because I have to do that right now, right? So does that give you a clear idea of how you can determine the value of your house one, you can have an appraisal. Two, you can have a realtor analysis. And then three, what a buyer is actually willing to pay is the number one priority. You can think all day long you're worth a million bucks, but if a buyer only believes it's worth 500K, then it is what it is, right? So then you got to get someone who's willing to pay the value you think you are. And that's one in a long shot. And it happens. I've seen people pay crazy prices for homes in a crazy real estate market. You just never know what a buyer and a seller are willing to settle on. So you give your best every single time. All right. That was enough for our seller question with regards to how do I determine the value of my property? Same thing for buyers. We'll go into that another time. Now, my buyer question that came in to me was down payment assistance, DPA. What is that? How do I get it? So here's the great information about down payment assistance, right? We have a lot of buyers out there right now, a lot, a lot of buyers out there that are entry level buyers. What is an entry level buyer? That is a buyer who's getting in and buying their first home and they only have enough money for their down payment or their closing costs or they have it all but they need to keep a little bit in the bank for reserves, right? Because here's the reality, you can get in to a house with 100% financing here in California. 
There's restrictions to it. How do I do it? What do I need to do? How do I qualify for it? Can I really get in for 100% financing? Sure you can. There's opportunities out there. Are you uh, uh, military? If you're military, the VA loan is one of the best loan programs out there. One of the best. It's a fantastic loan program, has great terms, really protects you. Here's the thing, with a VA loan, right? A lot of sellers don't get it. A lot of realtors don't get it. So they're like, oh, don't take the VA loan because they don't understand what a VA loan is and how it actually functions. When you hire a professional like myself, I can tell you in all certainty that you are secured as a seller when you sell your property to a veteran. I actually honor our veterans. I'm a daughter of a veteran. So I'm like, yes, let's support our veterans with our VA loan, right? And did you know, even when you're buying with a VA loan product, you don't even need to go 100% financing. You can put money down if you want and you get an even better loan term. So here's the deal with down payment assistance programs, right? There's tons of them available. You just need to get with the right real estate professional and the right lending professional. Choose us, Lori Alvarez, and we can help you make it happen, right? We can get you the answers to the loan programs that are out there. There's one that's called CalHafa. CalHafa is a fantastic loan program. And back in the day, I was helping so many CalHafa loan buyers, right? I had a great lender. I'm still working with him to this day. I love and adore him. His name's Mike. And he knows the CalHafa loan program like no tomorrow. And you can buy with as little as 1% down. And then you'll finance the rest of your fees through a second and third loan or grant, right? Fantastic program. It allows for you as the entry buyer to get in there and go, hey, all right, I want to buy this house. I don't have enough money. And I know you, Mr. Seller, do not want to give me the money. So I've taken out a grant or I've taken out a loan to cover the rest of those fees. I just need for you to give me some time to close on that loan. And a CalHafa loan literally takes about 35 days. Now, who can do a CalHafa loan? Well, there's income regulations, guys. Not everyone can use it. And if you listened in on our podcast, my very first podcast, a second episode, that I released, I had Justin Brown on and he talked all about the new income regulations for CalHafa loans right now. Those numbers have actually been raised, right? So if you haven't downloaded our podcast yet, please do. It's Real Estate with Soul, the podcast by Lori Alvarez. Go on there, download it. We have lots of great information on there. We're building and answering your questions on the podcast regularly, right? And including and not limited to right here on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, we love to bring great, valuable information to you to improve your buying and selling education and ability so that you can move forward with home ownership. I do believe that if you have the desire to own a home, you should own a home. And that's what we're here for, right? So there are lots of qualifying terms for down payment assistance. Another fantastic program out there, right? So I've got my great little checklist here. But another fantastic loan program out there, if you're not familiar with it, right? NACA. NACA is a fantastic loan. I think it's probably even better than um, the VA loan program. And it is not easy to get into the NACA loan program. 
So you got to be committed to take advantage of it. I have a buyer right now that I'm out helping them look for their home to get their first home. And they've been approved through the NACA loan program. And I am approved NACA certified agent. What is that? Well, it's a nonprofit program that's out there that helps educate buyers so that they better understand home ownership and they better understand the process of buying a home. And they're partnered with an agent who understands how to help them educate them on that process. We're those agents. We like to educate, bring you great value, make you help you to be more knowledgeable today than you were yesterday. So if you haven't checked that out, you need to check out the Knock Alone program. They have an online version and then, well, I know COVID-19 may change, but they would love, they would love, love, love. Hey, Marilyn Sparks, thanks for tuning in. And uh, oh, we need to have a talk about understanding insurance for ADUs. Thank you. Lisa is my home warranty rep. She's commented down below. Lisa is awesome. We'll tell you all about home warranties one day. I know Lisa would love to come on live with me as well, right? So, okay, look, back to down payment assistance for you buyers, right? And the NACA program, fantastic, fantastic. So many options. There's grants. There's loans, right? And then there's loans with deferred payments. There's loans with payments that are due right away. And then there's second mortgages. That stuff is out there and it's ready for you to better understand it. I'm gonna encourage you, if you haven't checked out the NACA program and you're wanting to get into home ownership, I have three clients that have all bought their properties through NACA. Oh, and that's what I forgot to tell you. My client that right now she's out buying, do you know that her interest rate is only going to be 2.68 when we close on her property? 2.68. And NACA is paying a ton of those fees for her to get that interest rate because it's a nonprofit. It's a fantastic program and it takes dedication to get approved through the NACA certified program, right? So if you want to check that out, of course, go to, I think it's NACA.com or something like that. Anyways, check it out or just text me at 909-227-4196 and I'll send you back the link with regards to it because it is a fantastic loan program. Okay, what's another loan program I can tell you about that we're really excited about? There is... Keller Mortgage, right? Keller Mortgage is our, our own. You have to work with a Keller Williams agent like myself. Keller Mortgage is a program that allows when you go in and we refer you to our Keller Mortgage rep, Keller Mortgage will pay a lot of your fees in order for you to get the purchase. Now, why is that important? because maybe a seller doesn't wanna pay your fees, guys. And maybe, maybe, maybe buyers, the seller has a bottom line as well. So if you can get the lender to contribute to those fees in order to have your offer successfully accepted so that you can go under contract and buy your first home, well, gosh, that's the best way to do it, right? Now, here's another thing I've heard in the past that um, uh, Upland has a, a first time home buyer program as well. And there's a wait list for that. Now, you have to understand there's wait lists for a lot of these first time home buyer programs. What does that mean? First time home buyer. That means that you've bought your house and it's your first home, right? Now there's the FHA loan that everyone thinks, oh, that's a first time home buyer loan. It's not. 
It is not. It's just a federal loan that's available with a lesser down payment and has different income regulations and is backed by a different mortgage security, right? That's available to you, right? So FHA is not a first time home buyer loan program. CalHAFA is a first time home buyer loan program. Uh, let's see, what is, oh, CalHeroes. My niece just recently asked me about CalHeroes and I need to call her. I've got to call her. Lexi, if you tune in, I'm going to call you. Uh, here's the deal. Cal Hero, fantastic loan program offered by one or two loan officers who like to honor our heroes. We love to honor you. We want to honor you. So know that what a Cal Hero has to offer, we can do as well. We just don't call it Cal Hero because we did not brand that. That's strictly a brand and they're giving you an opportunity with rebates in. That's all it is, is rebates in. So where do those rebates come from? They come from the seller, they come from the um, lender, they come from the realtor involved. All different parties can provide rebates to help you, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, buy your home, right? That's the reality of it. That's a great loan program out there too. Uh, I'm not affiliated with the Cal Hero program and I did some research on it because I had someone ask me about it. So I got that information, right? Um, let's see, what else do we have? How big of a down payment grant can I get? That's gonna vary on your income. It's gonna vary to the city regulations and the uh, local ordinances, right? All of that stuff varies. Very, very, very different. Um, also, when you're, you know, people will tell me, oh, okay, I know I can buy a house. I have great credit, Lori. I know I can do it. Yeah, I know you have great credit too, but do you know that there's loan limits to the community that you're looking at? No, you don't know that. Talk to a great lender. We have a few that we work with that we love and trust and know will guide you, educate you in the right direction. Don't call us and say you want to go buy a house and then say, well, I don't want to get approved. Well, then you don't really want to buy a house, okay? <laughs> because you can't buy a house without going and getting approved or having money in the bank, okay? So I'm just like, oh, that drives me crazy when people will call me and be like, oh, I want to buy a house. Oh, but I don't want you to pull my credit because that'll hurt my credit. Oh, come on now. It's like two points. Get over yourself. It isn't going to hurt your credit. You need to pull your credit so that you can get started. And then if you keep pulling it and pulling it and pulling it and pulling it after, well, then you're just stupid. That's just ridiculous. Of course, it doesn't make sense, right? But you do want to know every 90 days or so how you're doing. That's just reasonable, right? I will get a pre-approved letter with full underwriting approval that will tell me if you need down payment assistance, will tell me if you qualify for down payment assistance, will let the great seller know that you're qualified to buy a house, right? We don't wanna waste your time, don't waste ours. Get yourself pre-approved, talk to great lenders, We've got a lot that we work with and they all are qualified in different areas for different types of programs. Our NACA lender, fantastic. I'm currently working with a lady named Angelica. She is amazing. I've worked with her actually a couple of times. She's great. She is your lender from the beginning to the end and she is also your counselor through the NACA program, right? Then we have another lender that we work with that does really great service. And then like I mentioned, Keller Mortgage gives you money back in the form of rebates, right? To purchase your great home. All great opportunities. Yes, there's lots of down payment assistance out there. You just have to do the work up front. Talk to the right people, right? We don't know them all. Um, let's see, what else? 
What else? Uh, what kind of loans can be used with down payment assistance? FHA, VA loans, USDA loans, conventional loans, all the above, most definitely can, right? And then in the state of California, our biggest one is going to be the Cal CalHAFA program. That is going to be the largest one. You want to know more about that? Go to the CalHAFA website, Google it, or just call me and I'll connect you with my CalHAFA lenders. I have a couple great lenders that know the regulations, and I have lenders who actually enjoy working the CalHAFA loan program, right? I recently had a client come to me and she's all qualified for her CalHAFA loan. And she had found her lender all by herself. And unfortunately, her lender was not diligent enough, didn't notice that she had a lot of student loans that threw off her ability to purchase a home. Come on, guys. Get a lender who digs deep. If they aren't asking a lot of questions, they aren't doing their job. If they aren't asking for your firstborn baby, they aren't doing your job, right? They're not doing what needs to be done to help you get your purchase done, right? Because I'm only as good as the lender that I'm working with. And so I get no incentives when referring my lender to you. I get no incentives except for a high five. Thank you, Lori, for giving me another great client. What I do get is confidence to know that my lender that I referred to you knew what he was doing, crossed all the T's, dotted all the I's, so that when I put you under contract, I can feel confident that I can hit my timelines to get your house bought and protect your money while in escrow. Those are my incentives. Oh, and yeah, maybe every once in a while, they'll give me a Christmas gift at the end of the year, which is cookies or something, you know. So come on, guys. When we're sending you our affiliate partners, it's because we want to take care of you. That is all we want to do. And we want to make sure that we put you with someone that we believe is a good fit for you, right? So again, there's down payment assistance programs out there. The biggest one in the state of California is CalHAFA. Then there's also the NACA loan certified program. That's a nonprofit. Um, and then there's the VA loan program, which is an amazing program for veterans and veterans only and can only be used if you're occupying the property. So you must live in the property. And that is the majority of all down payment assistant programs. You must live in the property in order to take advantage of those grants and loans out there that are of down payment assistance. Okay? So make sure you're occupying it. It's called loan fraud if you don't. All right. Moving on to our homeowner tip, right? What was the first we started with a seller question? How do I determine the value of my property? And I went into uh, CMAs, appraisals, and then buyer valuations and seller valuations, right? We talked about that first. So if you missed it in the beginning, the beautiful thing about this is it's recorded. You can go back and listen to it. My second, my second aspect was a buyer question down payment assistance. I just went on and on about it and what it is and how it's beneficial to you. And I'm going to encourage you again. Here's a reminder. We have our podcast, Real Estate with Soul, Lori Alvarez, the podcast. Download it. It's free. Listen to it. We upload every other week with great informational um, tidbits on buying, selling, investing, and owning real estate, right? That's all we talk about on there. Because as you can tell, I love to talk about that. That's my thing. I really enjoy it. My family loves helping your family move forward. Okay, now let's get into this. 
homeowner tip. I love this idea, right? So a lot of you will buy your first home or you've had a home for a while, right? And you close on your first home and we give you all this information, okay? And you're like, what the heck do I do with all this information? And so what do you do with it? What is important? What should you do with it? Where should you keep it? How should you keep it? Why do you even need to keep it? Those are all great questions, right? And so here's the reality. What do you want to do? I suggest, I personally got this tip from one of my best girlfriends, also one of my affiliate partner owners, and they own their own business too. So I always love talking to other business owners because they come up with the coolest ideas. And I'm like, oh, that was fantastic. Why didn't I do that sooner? Right? So homeowner tip, create an online folder for all your important docs and important information with regards to your house. So what information would I wanna put in there? What is important? And okay, so Lori, I don't know how to create an online folder. I don't wanna have anything online. I'm still paper. I still need to hold something. I still want to hold it. Well, okay. I remember when my son started in my business and he was like, mom, do we need to have a physical folder anymore for our files? Do we really have to do this? And I was like, yes, I really need to have a piece of paper in my hands. And he was like, mom, that is crazy. When we can do the same thing in Google Drive and it's available to you everywhere. Or we can do the same thing in Dropbox and you can get it everywhere. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. And then he forced me to because, you know, it just made great sense. He said, mom, let's just try. And I said, okay, fair enough. So we did. He created an online folder. We use Google Drive. It's protected, right? And he put all my clients' information in that file. Well, I still was like, ah. Oh. And I was like, no, I don't want to look at it on my little tiny phone. So what did I do? I went out and bought a full-size iPad, right? That's what I went out and did. So it's legal size, feels like a piece of paper, right? Perfect, made best sense for me. And guess what? I get to look at it just like a piece of paper. I'm like, oh, this feels just like a piece of paper. So then guess what? I go right over here and I go to, oh, where's my Google Drive folder? Oh no, where is it? I find that Google Drive, oh, stop that. Find it, oh, right there, it's in my Google products, right? There's Google Drive. And then I go in and guess what? Oh, you can't see it, there's a glare. My son has created little files in here, right? Little files that say property files. And then there's little files that say listings. And then in those listings is my pre-listing, my pre-market, my active, my pending, right? You can't see it because guess what? It's a glare, right? And so here's the deal. When you do that, right, you will say, okay, what do I do? So let's do this. Let's open and I'll share my screen with you. And I'll show you. Here is my Google Drive right? Right in here is everything I have. Does that make sense? Can you see it? Right? So it makes great sense for me. Here it is, right? And you'll see, right? How do we do business? 411, listing presentation, social media, so on and so forth. Well, I also have in here, in my drive, I also have my taxes file, right? Oops, 
spelled that wrong, taxes, right? Taxes, there we go, taxes, right? And here's all my taxes information. It's right there for me, right? I created a file that made sense for me, right? I did that. I created a file that made sense for me. And guess what? I gave my CPA full access to it so he could get in there and check it. So what am I going to suggest you do? Create an online file for your house. What are you going to put in it? I would encourage you to add home warranties. My home warranty rep was on earlier, Lisa, right? She's with American Home Shield. You take your home warranty when you first close on your house and you upload it to your Google Drive or your Dropbox or wherever it is you want to put it, right? You put it in there. So that way, when the water heater breaks, you go, oh my gosh, what do I do? You go right to your home ownership binder or Google Drive file and you say, oh, who's the home warranty person? Okay, that's the home warranty person. Then you can call them, connect with them, and they can help you. And it'll be Lisa's information right in there for you saying, hey, call me first because I root for Lori Alvarez's clients and I make it happen, right? What else would you keep in there? Your homeowner's insurance policy, like Marilyn Sparks, who commented down below, right? She is a homeowner's insurance policy. Um, she's a homeowner insurance rep, right? She is the one that can help you. Now, don't confuse a home warranty with a homeowner insurance policy. Those are two very different things, and you should have those in your insurance in your homeowner binder. What's another great thing to have in it? Um, all your appliances warranties, right? have your appliances warranties in there. So the dishwasher in our house, when we first did our kitchen renovation, our dishwasher like crashed and burned six months after we put it in, brand new, right? And you have a warranty that's likely a year on it. So where do you get that information? Well, of course you can find it on the internet if you can remember what not model it is and blah, 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 and all this stuff. But Maybe you don't remember all of that, but if you just put it in your binder, in your file, then it's right there for you. So you don't have to remember everything, retain all the other information. What's another great thing to keep in there? Your mortgage statement, right? Who handles your mortgage every month? Now, why would you want to put that in there? God forbid something happened to you. God forbid something happened to you, right? You have all that information online. I had a friend who passed away unexpectedly. Her daughter inherited the house and she did not know where any of her emergency documents were for her mom. And the house started to go into foreclosure because mom was receiving the statements online and no one had access to her online information and mom was not getting any paperwork in the mail. So it took her about three months before she finally got access to all that information, right? So one, make sure you're sharing all this great information with someone you can trust, right? And set up a trust and set up Ooh, we're a Dave Ramsey advocates too. We teach Dave Ramsey and Dave Ramsey says, have your emergency box and put it in your safe, right? Same idea. Have it in a Google Drive, have it in a Dropbox, have it in whatever makes best sense for you for the product that you like, or have a tangible box, put it in a fireproof safe so that you can get to it and or have a binder that has all the information in it so that when, in case there's an emergency or you just need the information, it's there so people can help you. Would be another great thing to put in that. I'm going to tell you, right, your receipts for all your purchases, your receipts, because one day you're going to sell this house 
and you're going to want to write that stuff off. And if you get audited by the IRS, you'll have your receipts there. And let me tell you, when you keep a receipt long term, what happens? It slowly, the ink goes away. But if you use what I love that my girlfriend recommended to me was I downloaded a little scanner program on my phone, right? And then I just boop, click the scanner button and took a picture of it and then uploaded it straight to my scanner file that was then in my receipts file or my home ownership file or wherever you're saving all that great information, right? It's a great way to keep yourself very organized and allow for you to be successful and free up the mind space, all the stuff that you have in here. It's like, oh, I got to remember, who's my home warranty girl? Who's my homeowner insurance rep? Who is my realtor? Lori Alvarez. Store our contact information in there as well. Lori helped us buy a house. We loved her. We gave her five-star reviews on Yelp and all those other pages. And we keep in contact with her. And her information is there for us when we need to get a hold of her. What else should you keep in there, right? Um, let's see, we said appliances. Oh, reliable contractors. I loved that idea for sure. Reliable contractors. Why do you want to have reliable contractors in there? Because when you find a great one, you don't want to let them go. I have one of the most awesome plumbers right now, right? And I pray, pray, pray that he doesn't go out of business because I know if I call him, he'll get right out there, check out the plumbing issues at my properties and handle it. Right. And sometimes, sometimes contractors are the hardest to find. Right. So when you find a great contractor, store that information. We keep all of those contractors in ours and we build that database of great contractors that we recommend. And we do check in to see how our contractors are doing. Oh, I recently just had someone ask me about a sprinkler repair person. My gardener is awesome and he's taking care of my sprinklers. I referred another sprinkler guy and it seems like he's been out of business. So if you have a great sprinkler person, comment down below because I know someone who needs that information. We're doing our due diligence to help them find a great sprinkler person, right? Because it's just hard to find a great contractor that you can trust and rely in. Um, okay, what would be some other great information that you would want to put in there? Well, you know, those would probably be the big things that I would recommend. You did a termite inspection, put that in there so you know when you did it right? Put a new water heater in. We put a tankless water heater in a couple of years ago. We put a new garbage disposal in a year ago. It's a great way to track all of that because when you go to sell your house, we're going to ask you all those questions. I had one house that I sold. The lady was an original owner. She'd been in the house for like 70 years and she was awesome. She had a little piece of paper that was in her like little scrabbly. Oh, it's so awesome. Her like little old lady handwriting, right? So cool. And um, it had Lori in 1986, I put a new garbage disposal in and it was $50. And in 1952, I did this. Oh my gosh, it was so great. We had to put it up on the wall for staging purposes because it just really added to the ambiance of that house, right? That house, we sold it in its original condition, just the way it was, exactly how you expected. And we sold it for more money, right? And that lady, she took such great care. And you want to know why? Because she was a great record keeper. She paid attention to how she took care of and invested in her home. Okay, now I promised you I was going to touch on ADUs, and I only have a couple more minutes, and I'm going to take Marilyn up on that conversation about how to insure yourself when you add an ADU. 
right? So Lori, what is an ADU? It's an accessory dwelling unit. Lori, what is a JADU? It's a junior accessory dwelling unit. Fantastic way to generate more income and it's legal. You can do it on your own property and you got to want to be a landlord, right? You have to. And it's worth the investment if it makes sense for you. I'd love to talk to you more about what that is and how you go about doing it and what the cost of it is. And Marilyn and I will have a conversation on what it takes to insure yourself when you put one on. But that's what an ADU is. If you want to know more about it, give me a call because I don't have time to get into it right now. We'll definitely have a conversation about them on our podcast. And in the meantime, our newest podcast just went up today. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, download it and then check out our blog. We have a, a blog and an email list with all this great information. So thanks so much for tuning in, saying hello, checking in, adding great value. If you have questions that you need answered with regards to buying, selling, or investing, or home ownership, just real estate in general, please feel free to comment down below. I would love to answer them. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in. I'm Lori Alvarez. And you can catch me at 909-227-4196. And of course, of course, you can check us out at LoriAlvarez.net. Thanks again for tuning in.